Hey everyone, we are going to work on practice sheet number three. So first what I want to do is look at this first one. This one is actually worth um, four problems, okay? So it says we're going to use the coordinate plane to answer the question. Describe the sequence of the translation used to move figure one onto figure two. So how are we moving figure one to two? Okay, so number one, I know that I'm moving, I can tell the figure one is moving to the left. I can tell that, okay? And I can also tell that the figure went down, okay? So now I'm just going to count point to point, okay? So I need to count, for instance, this point to this point. Okay, so I'm going to use a different color just so you can see. So this point moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It moved 10 left. And then from here, 1, 2, 3. It moved 3 down. Now, if you are doing it algebraically, you would say x minus 10. Oops, I don't mean to put that parentheses there. And then y minus 3. Okay. So this is how you do it. Describe the sequence. That's the sequence that moves the figure. Okay, because I can tell it moved left and it moved down. Okay. So as soon as you see those directions, that should help you, if it's multiple choice, get rid of a few answers. Okay, so the next one says determine the coordinates of the image of figure two. We're looking at figure two. If translated one left and three down. So figure two is three left and one down. <coughs> now these points are not labeled like A, B, C, D. So I don't care where you start. I'm just looking for four correct points. So your job is to move each of these. I'm going to do one and show you how to do it. Okay, so one left, three down. So I'm just going to choose this point. One left, three down. One, two, three. So actually, that's on one of the original points. Okay, so I may actually move that one and have you count it. That's my new point. I'm putting it in a different color. That is, I can tell from here, negative eight, two. Now, I'm going to go back to this point here, and I'm going to do the same thing, and then I'll let you um, find the actual coordinates. So I'm going to move it one left, three down. One left, one, two, three, down. And I can tell that. Okay, so your job is to put this point right here. Okay, and you're going to do that to the other points. Okay, that's your job. Okay, now let's go to the next one. No calculator, normal division, I will set you up. 54.72 divided by 0.6, okay? All you do first is do the movement of the point. We want that decimal at the end. Okay, so that means I have to move it once here. So 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54. Okay, so I would just start 6 into 5, won't go. 6 into 54. Oh, this should have been 54, not 56, my bad. Uh, 9. Okay, 54, and you're going to take it from there and keep everything lined up. It should divide evenly. It shouldn't repeat. Okay. Okay, uh, number three. I'm going to let you multiply this, but I will tell you, make sure, by the way, that you put this answer over here. On this one, this is multiply. Multiply, we use the triangle. Negative times positive is a negative. I'm going to go ahead and take care of that now. 
And now you multiply this. And in your final answer, you'll move that decimal one time. Okay? So you multiply that. Number four. Now, number four, you need work, but the actual multiplication, you can use the calculator for it. You don't have to. Um, but remember, when we're doing volume, we do our 5V method. Okay, so this is a triangular prism. So if you look on your formula chart, you'll find big B, H. Big B is area of the base times the height. The shape of the base is this. I'm just going to darken it. That is a triangle because this is a triangular prism. So then I use my formula chart to formula chart to find area of a triangle. Area of a triangle is half BH. That half is important. Okay. Now I plug my numbers in half. Look at the triangle, 4.5 and 5, times 5, and the height, the prism height is 8. That's the number that connects the triangles, okay? Your job is to, if you want to solve it by hand, like taking half of 8, you can do that, or you can use the calculator from this point, okay? Now, almost done. You can also use the form, uh, the calculator for this one. You do need the formula chart. So circumference is towards the top. C equals, ooh, I don't know which one to use. Well, this is diameter. So I'm going to use pi D. Okay. Now, you can, I'm just going to, for this sake, put in 3.14. And the diameter is 18. But if you have the calculator, you can use the pi button, okay, to multiply that out. Okay. For area, area of a circle is about midway down through the formula chart. A equals pi r squared. R squared, because remember our units are squared. This time I want the radius, so I need to come over here. If the diameter is 18, radius is half of that. So the radius is 9. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put 3.14, but go on and use the pi button on your calculator. The radius is 9. Remember, 9 squared isn't 9 times 9. I'm sorry, it isn't 9 times 2. It means 9 times 9. Okay? So feel free to use the calculator on this part. Okay?